Three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. What does the space race have to do with the future of humanity? The intense rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War shaped the direction of space exploration for decades. From the shock of Sputnik's unexpected launch to NASA's Apollo triumph, space exploration became a symbol of national pride and technological supremacy. But today, the stakes are even higher. With new players like China entering the race, the future of space exploration is at a crossroads. Will humanity work together, or will old rivalries resurface? Let's dive into the space race, both past and present, and see where we're headed next. Sputnik and NASA On October 4th, 1957, the world changed forever. The Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, into space. The satellite was a simple radio transmitter, sending out a series of beeping signals as it orbited the Earth. To the Soviets, it was an achievement in space technology. To the United States, it was a wake-up call that triggered panic and fear. The thought that a communist nation could outpace the US in such an advanced technological field sent shockwaves through the nation. Not only did the launch demonstrate the Soviets' technological prowess, but it also raised concerns about the military implications. A satellite could carry a warhead far beyond the reach of traditional defense systems. This threat prompted the US to act quickly. In response, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, Act in 1958, establishing NASA as the country's civilian space agency. Despite its civilian status, most astronauts came from the military. NASA's creation marked the beginning of the United States' commitment to space exploration. By the fall of 1958, NASA had launched its first satellites, and the space race had officially begun. But the Soviets had already gained significant ground, launching the first living being, a dog named Laika, into space in November 1957, followed by the first human, Yuri Gagarin in 1961. This left the US playing catch-up, scrambling to prove its technological superiority. This period of frantic innovation and national competition pushed both countries to develop advanced space technologies, laying the groundwork for the future of space exploration. Sputnik wasn't just a satellite. It was a powerful signal to the world that the space age had begun, and every country now had to stake its claim in the vast unknown. And while the Soviets had led the way initially, it was clear that the space race was far from over. Both superpowers were determined to outdo each other with every milestone. Soviets and Apollo The early years of the space race were defined by Soviet successes. The US was struggling to catch up, and each Soviet milestone added pressure. In 1957, after Sputnik, the Soviets launched the first living creature into space, Laika, aboard Sputnik 2. Unfortunately, Laika did not survive the journey, but this feat solidified Soviet dominance in space exploration. The first human in space, Yuri Gagarin, followed in 1961, leaving the US with a burning sense of urgency. This moment marked the US at a crossroads. Could they reclaim technological dominance in space? While President John F. Kennedy's challenge to the nation, announced in May 1961, aimed to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade, the task seemed daunting. Gagarin's flight had shown the world that the Soviets were not only beating the US in space, but also achieving the impossible. Kennedy's speech, though stirring, was more than just about space. It was a message about freedom and democracy in the face of growing Soviet influence. Kennedy's declaration set in motion the Apollo program, aimed directly at the moon. The US needed to do something spectacular to reclaim the race. The Apollo program wasn't just about getting to the moon, it was about reaffirming the nation's technological supremacy, not just in the military sphere, but in every scientific field. It became a race not only for space, but for global leadership in innovation and power. In 1969, the Apollo 11 mission finally succeeded in its goal. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the lunar surface, cementing America's victory in the space race. 
However, this was a victory built on years of catching up to the Soviets' early lead. The Soviets had already put the first human in orbit, and their advancements in space technology were as impressive as they were humbling for the US. Yet, the Soviet Union's early lead didn't translate into sustained space exploration success. They quickly ran into issues with their space program, and while they achieved many notable firsts, the first woman in space, the first space station, they were unable to match the scale and ambition of the Apollo program. The Apollo missions were designed to put men on the moon and bring them home safely, which was the defining benchmark of the space race. The Apollo missions showed the world that America could rise to the challenge. The US didn't just respond to Soviet challenges, they set their own audacious goals, transforming a Cold War competition into a global symbol of human achievement. The landing of Apollo 11 not only served as the U.S. quote, S victory in the space race, but also symbolized humanity's triumph, marking a milestone that would inspire generations to come. Post Apollo and China After the success of Apollo 11, the space race began to lose its political edge. The US had beaten the Soviets to the moon, and the geopolitical motivation that fueled space exploration started to wane. By 1972, the Apollo program was cancelled, and the focus shifted to other priorities. The US shifted its attention to Earth's needs, with fewer resources devoted to space exploration. The moon became a distant memory, and the next major milestone came with the development of the Space Shuttle program in the late 1970s. The shuttle was designed to be reusable and cost-effective, but it was far from the groundbreaking, singular achievement that Apollo had been. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union was winding down its space program in the wake of the Cold War's end. It wasn't until the late 2000s that the US would feel the geopolitical pressure once again. Enter China. By the early 2000s, China had begun to establish itself as a global power, and its space program was no exception. The Chinese government set ambitious goals, including sending astronauts into space and building its own space station. In 2003, China launched its first astronaut, Yang Liwei, into orbit, joining the ranks of spacefaring nations. From there, the country's space program accelerated rapidly, with increasingly sophisticated missions and technology. China's rise in space exploration has been strategic, fueled by the desire for both technological advancement and geopolitical influence. China has made it clear that it aims to rival the US in space exploration. In recent years, China has set its sights on the Moon and Mars, launching successful lunar missions and making plans for future manned moon landings. The renewed competition has spurred the US to take action. President Donald Trump, recognizing China's growing capabilities, launched the Artemis program, aiming to return American astronauts to the Moon by 2024. Unlike Apollo, Artemis focuses on building a sustainable presence on the Moon, with plans to eventually send astronauts to Mars. The program is a direct response to China's growing space ambitions, reaffirming the US commitment to space exploration. The Artemis mission represents the U.S. quote. S. Latest Attempt to Reclaim Leadership in Space while the original Apollo missions were driven by political competition, Artemis seeks to pave the way for future generations by establishing permanent lunar exploration and opening the door for even bolder goals, like Mars. The new space race is not just about reaching the moon, it's about ensuring leadership in the next great frontier. Collaboration or conflict? As the US and China continue to push the boundaries of space exploration, there are increasing concerns about the future of space cooperation. The US and its allies, including Russia, have created the Artemis Accords, a framework for peaceful and transparent space exploration. However, China has yet to sign the Accords, and its growing influence in space raises questions about future conflicts. Will nations work together to explore space, or will competition and national interests drive them apart? The potential for cooperation is clear. Scientific discoveries, resource sharing, and international partnerships could drive humanity forward in space. But the risk of competition and geopolitical tensions is ever-present. As we venture further into the cosmos, the choice between collaboration and conflict will shape the future of space exploration. 
The next era of space exploration could either unite humanity or deepen existing divisions. Space could either be the arena of collaboration or a new battleground for dominance. Conclusion The space race has evolved from a Cold War rivalry into a new era of global competition. America's Apollo missions were a monumental achievement, but today nations like China are pushing the boundaries even further. The future of space exploration is uncertain. Will nations unite for the greater good, or will they let old rivalries resurface? The Artemis program offers a glimmer of hope for collaboration, but the stakes are higher than ever. Only time will tell if humanity can rise above political differences and explore the cosmos together. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.